Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Ministry of Agriculture renews its thrust for a thriving coconut industry. The Bureau of Standards warns against the fraudulent use of the St. Lucia Standard Mark. And digital education training is expanded across the nation's schools. The Ministry of Agriculture continues to explore various avenues in developing the local coconut industry. Minister Honorable Ezekiel Joseph recently participated in a regional forum that discussed the results of a survey on the industry commissioned for a Caribbean project designed to help the development of the coconut industry. Phase 1 of the project, which spanned 2015 to 2018, saw approximately 5,000 farmers sourcing planting materials from more than 20 seedling nurseries established and or refurbished across the Caribbean. More than 2,000 farmers and 474 extension officers were trained industry management, pest management, crop production, processing, trade finance and group dynamics. Additionally, 11 private public platforms were established and a new Caribbean-wide standard for packaged coconut water developed. Noting the challenges faced by coconut water vendors, Chairman of the National Stakeholders Platform, Kenny Danielle, said the first is now to create a coconut vendors cooperative. There is not an organization that takes care of them, no. so they can be pushed. And today they push one direction, and then next time they push another way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm be, uh, marketing board is supposed to be demolished. Right. What happens to them? All right. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things um, I was looking at, and then because of that, I said, "Hey, we need to form an, an association or a cooperative that can address your needs." Okay. And so far, we have we are doing good as far as the cooperative is concerned. We have the bylaws, we have um, the registrar and his team on board, mm. and uh, I must say that I was very surprised, and you know, when I saw the the. Um, amount of efforts that they put in this whole cooperative development for, this, for the coconut vendors okay. and stakeholders. The European Union and Cari Forum funded project received a further investment of 6 million euros to develop the region's coconut industry in phase two. Having commenced in 2019, phase two of the project focuses on improving the competitiveness of farmers and strengthening the coconut value chain. Climate change, health and nutrition, increasing investments and value-added product development will be emphasized. Daniel explained that St. Lucia too will be intensifying efforts to boost the coconut industry from the raw products to agro-processing and export. The platform will also be working with outside entities where possible in that vein. Some ventures include establishing MOUs with landowners to grow coconut trees outside of St. Lucia, as well as the establishment of a venue dubbed Tutbagai Coco. Recently, uh, somebody said to me, um, Kenny, you don't know there's this food court yes. in Brazilia, obviously Bank of St. Lucia? I said, no, well, I don't really go travel up to the north because there's traffic jam and all these kind of things, I sit down. Yeah. And then when I went, I was surprised. I said, okay, let me see what we can do. So I went to the Grosier Council and, and uh, spoke with the mayor and he was very, uh, accommodating and then he says, hey, this is an excellent idea. And just like um, Peterson Francis and Castries, he said to me, you're solving all our problems because you're bringing them together. Mm -hmm. And then once you bring them together, then we don't have the problem of roadside vending again. Mm -hmm. We still have people who want the, the traditional coconut water, they want to see it. Mm -hmm. But eventually they'll understand that, hey, this is done under sanitary conditions. Okay. So for example, if we get um, some space in Otsa, you can deliver your thousand coconuts. We'll schedule everything. You deliver your thousand coconuts today, somebody else deliver a thousand tomorrow, and we go along working with the coconuts and doing what we have to do. Mm -hmm. you know? okay. So eventually, you now sell maybe a thousand coconuts every day. So you get to, to buy cocoa, get gash, to buy everything up there? Everything. Wow, wow. The project, which will run until 2023, will be implemented by the International Trade Center in partnership with the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CARDI, and other regional and national partners. The project also aims to enable the participating Caribbean states to capitalize on rapidly growing global demands for coconut. 
The global trade in coconut water alone is projected to grow by more than 25% in the next five years. The ministry is again encouraging all residents of St. Lucia to get vaccinated to protect themselves, their family and the wider society against COVID-19. A total of 29,023 individuals have received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and 20,042 of those have also received the second dose. The COVID-19 vaccination drive continues at sites island-wide. Meantime, director of the Pan-American Health Organization has made another appeal for access to vaccines in the hemisphere. Dr. Carissa Etienne says in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago reported the largest spike in COVID-19 infections and deaths over the past month, whilst hospitalizations in Haiti continue to stretch the country's oxygen supplies. Dr. Etienne says the region desperately needs more doses of COVID-19 vaccines. While we need more doses everywhere, uh, the countries at greatest risk where vaccines have been slowest to arrive and even where vulnerable populations have yet to be protected, these countries urgently need more vaccines. We are thankful for the United States government's decision to donate an initial 6 million doses to countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. Spain has also generously donated 5 million doses to Latin America and the Caribbean. And we are so grateful to Canada, which has committed 50 million Canadian dollars to expand access to COVID-19 vaccines in the region. We hope that other countries, particularly those with excess doses and global financial institutions will follow in the footsteps to provide the support that we need to protect the 70% of our population that will not be covered under COVAX. The PAHO director says it is important that countries rely on the science as the region pushes towards vaccination. This virus has been extensively researched. Treatments and vaccines have undergone rigorous testing and global institutions like the WHO and PAHO are continuing to update guidance based on the latest available evidence. We urge countries to use this guidance and focus on what works. Unproven treatments must be studied in the realm of clinical trials, not promoted for political gain, while patients are made more vulnerable by embracing strategies that don't work. As we look to the months ahead, we must remember that the decisions we take will affect our collective ability to control this virus. If current trends continue, the health, social, and economic disparities in our region will grow even larger, and it will be years before we control this virus in the Americas. But by working together, we can limit the spread of COVID-19. We can move closer to a more equal world and fulfill our promise of health for all. Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, SLBS, has become aware of the fraudulent use of the St. Lucia standard mark on documents being presented with items imported into St. Lucia. The St. Lucia standard mark on a product is a quality seal indicating that the product complies with regionally and internationally accepted national standards and that the supplier maintains an efficient and appropriate quality management system. The mark is not a trade license and does not replace normal trade regulations. The sale and issue of the mark by any party other than the SLBS is prohibited under the Standards Act and will be prosecuted. Persons culpable of this offense are liable to a fine of $10,000 and an additional penalty of $1,000 for every day of which the offense continues or to imprisonment for six months. The Bureau of Standard advises retailers to refrain from accepting fraudulent documents in the normal transaction of business and should report such documents presented to them to the SLBS. 
The teacher training component under the Pro Fratero Digital Education Pilot Program in St. Lucia has been expanded beyond the initial 12 schools to equip as many educators at the primary school level as possible while working through pandemic conditions. The program is an initiative of the Spain-based Pro Fratero Foundation and is being facilitated in St. Lucia and four other countries of the English-speaking Caribbean by the Organization of American States, OAS. Twelve schools were initially part of the pilot receiving technological equipment and educational content, in addition to the teacher training offered to all primary school teachers. Curriculum specialists for technology integration in the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Jermaine Anthony, says the training has been a great help since the return to in-class instruction. We find that the teachers can be a little more comfortable with using the equipment that was provided in the Pro Futuro. And even if the schools do not have that um, specific equipment, the fact that the, the, the content can be integrated with other equipment okay. means that um, the training is not lost. The okay. content itself can be accessed online, it can be downloaded, um, but you don't need to have specifically the tablets donated by Pro Futuro mm -hmm. to be able to use the resources. And that's the key thing. The Profutero equipment provides an intranet experience in a classroom. A laptop for the teacher comes with an access point that can be used to transmit learning content to tablets for students. Anthony says a teacher who has completed the training but does not have the equipment can still access the Profutero education content online. Resident representative of the OAS in St. Lucia, Lili Ching Soto, says the pilot project was timely in bridging gaps for digital education in St. Lucia just when the pandemic began affecting the education sector. We received the equipment at the Ministry of Education of St. Lucia coming straight from Spain, February 2020. March 2020, schools were closed. So it was so timely to have this project being um, rolled out right at the same time as the COVID pandemic was was happening that it showed us the power showed us the power of transformation the need for transformation and it was absolutely key into moving forward together with the ministry of education of, of st lucia into trying to reduce the gap for digital education edu education and also for children to have access to education because COVID was so disruptful and, um, and this initiative was part of the initiatives that the Ministry of Education was able to take on in order to be able to access those children or and these children have access to this education that they were missing, especially for the first months. Mm -hmm. Pro Futero Digital Education Program Pilot will continue throughout 2021 and is hoped to be fully expanded to other primary schools in 2022. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayola. Here at St. Lucia Distillers, we produce an award-winning range of rums and rum products. We export our rums to the Caribbean, North America and Europe. Standards facilitate our entry into overseas markets. In the rum business, it is critical that our distillers and blenders get it right. St. Lucia Distillers is HACCP certified. We use two standards from SLBS, the standard for labeling of pre-packaged foods, SLNS 1-3-2014 and the national specification for rum, SLNS 12, 2003. We are also a registered member of the West Indies Rum and Spirit Producers Association, WISPA. SLBS ensures that we are up to standard and world class. This message is brought to you by the Commonwealth Standards Network. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci Uta, Chanel. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui n'est pas de pour les formations en gouvernement, c'est le CISAC GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Capositeau Nouvelle à Créole, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. 
ménagement pour l'hôpital Saint-Jude. J'apprends des marches pour faire assurer les gens qui ont besoin de service X-ray, ça trouve le service ça là, ça pièce trois cassements. L'hôpital là, à ce temps qui est passé, tenu pour payer pour transportation les patients pour trouver le service ça là à l'autre institution de ce pays là. Pour ces plusieurs mois qui sont passés, l'hôpital Saint-Jude trouvait la capacité de service X-ray de trouver affecté sérieusement après la machine a trouvé dommagé. Mais chef officier exécutif pour l'hôpital là, Diana Henry Ernest, a assurance là qui n'a jamais été en en place pour trouver une solution avec l'hôpital là qui a travaillé tout bonnement pour que la situation là trouver réglée plus vite que possible. La machine extrait de l'hôpital là pas en service depuis le 3 en mois de mars 2021. Avec Madame Ernest, nous avons des grands portes pour la machine pour les gens qui ont besoin de service là, et encore yo ni pour qu'à payer pour transportation ces patients là pour trouver service là à de l'autre institution santé. Madame Ernest explique aussi yo savent des grands importants machines extrait pour aider découvrir plusieurs maladies. Alors yo en est pas ça au pour les soins extrait. Pour les autres là, Ernest fait comprendre que c'est une institution medical imaging à vieux fort yo ni pour chercher assistance pour ces tas là et que ça pas possible. Je ne peux pas aller juste à l'hôpital Sofouye. Le chef officier exécutif de l'hôpital l'a expliqué aussi. Il a déjà fait contact et puis c'est mettre à faire qui n'a capacité pour adresser cette situation là et pour mettre la machine exprès de l'hôpital Saint-Jude à sous pied. D'accord. Contact déjà fait et puis les personnels ont de Santo Domingo pour découvrir ces problèmes de machine exprès là et qu'à présent, les Grecs à l'hôpital là ont fait pour morceau équipement à arriver cette ici pour machine exprès Saint-Jude. Sa vie en opération, encore encore. Agence de santé publique pour ces pays caribéens, c'est CAFA. J'ai conseillé le ministère de la Santé, cette ci concernant les grandes quantités de sang Sahara qui a commencé à affecter ces pays caribéens et qui a continué pour l'autre deux ou trois jours qui a venu. Selon le rapport CAFA, il est possible de voir ça là pour la situation les a trouvé affectée autant. Et que c'est une qui plus haut que Jidla, l'organisation de santé mondiale déjà établie. Par conséquent, des situations là, la Kaini y a une augmentation parmi les gens qui ont souffert et puis l'opposition et l'étouffement pour les ressources là. Il y a un appel déjà fait pour montrer encore plus, et plus important à présent pour les gens qui ont masse à souffrir de la considération, en considération de la maladie de Corona qui a continué à affecter le pays parce que. La situation là, qui a trouvé affectée, c'est tellement grave par son sala qui a posé un gros problème. Alors, le ministère de la Santé a appelé deux, et puis principalement, les gens qui ont divers problèmes, l'expiration, le potion, le sinus et l'autre condition comme ça. Pour aller au petit docteur, et bien n'importe assistant médical qui est nécessaire, depuis qu'il y a ces difficultés pour prendre l'expiration. C'est l'organisation de la Santé sala qui a conseillé les membres publics pour limiter l'activité qui a ni des rois. Et pour faire si vous avez servi de masse, qui est resté bien sur le fait de vous donner de votre lait. Ministre de la responsabilité pour l'agriculture et la pêche, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, qui a cru qu'il fixait le site qui a continué pour faire une vallée haut à la place internationale. Selon le ministre agricole, c'est l'agence là qui a acheté le fait de payer, j'ai dit, l'année en haut de main pour faire de nous. Magui fixe cette ici plus cher à sous la place internationale. On a vu ce que Joseph fait comprendre la situation de la Seyon qui a apporté bon avantage pour l'industrie de la Seyon. Mais ce que nous avons allé pour nous, c'est que Magui fixe cette ici plus cher à la place. là. Nous avons acheté plus fixe cette ici. Nous avons acheté plus vite sur le market. So, so on va dire que il pas problème, mais ça veut dire consistance et puis qualité, bon qualité. So, nous avons une responsabilité ça um, pour nous ça, nous ça va bon qualité et puis pour nous ça ni en consistent basis. Mais ça veut là aussi parler de un système de irrigation, de irrigation ça veut dire pour fournir plantation figue et puis service de l'eau, particulièrement à Kawem là. Le ministre a fait comprendre aussi qu'il y pour prendre en considération ces offres d'IA en Angleterre et qu'il est plus important pour fournir 
pays ça et puis préfet. Pour nous, ça fait ça, nous ne pouvons pas faire irrigation. Donc, so, irrigation, so, placement qui sert pour irrigation, nous avons des pharmacies pour irrigation. Placement qui ne sert pour irrigation, nous avons des pièces de choix. Ce n'est pas tout partout cette liste pour ça, parce que nous avons besoin de water source pour irriguer. Donc, so, ça, c'est dans ces bails-là, nous avons veillé pour que ça nous a fait pour um, assister les femmes. Et vous avez ça c'est côté nous en votre nouvelle là. Donc quand même autant pour regarder, moi qu'avoir une invitation. Pour je puis moi encore si dire conserver la vie. Mais n'ai pas autre autre nouvelle à croire à la présent. Moi qu'a vie pour cette au général. Merci à Pill Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.